Today, I want to talk to you about company culture. Now, this is a hot topic, and for me, I've been getting a lot of inquiries about this recently. I've got a couple of clients and prospective clients all calling me, asking me for some help around establishing and identifying the company culture. You know, so the culture for their organization, what goes on in their company, how people perceive the company and how they interact with everyone else in the company, what are the visions and the goals for the company. All these kind of things make up your company's culture. And nowadays, I find, or in my experience at least, there's been a lot of toxic company cultures um, out there, and it's sabotaging the success of the company and also the individuals that work within the company. So I'm going to share with you 12 characteristics and also behaviors that can destroy an organization's culture. Starting off, the first one, not knowing what your culture is. So most organizations, as I say, don't actually have or identify what are the cultures within their organization. They just run day to day, they operate, uh, and they may have a vision and they may have a mission, but they don't actually identify what is the culture of the organization. How do they do things? How do people within the company interact with each other? How do they interact with um, external, so their customers and other stakeholders as well? So these things are quite, quite important. You need to identify and you, you need to know what is the, your company culture. What is it all about? The second thing, and that is uh, having absent or unresponsive management, especially when there is trouble or in times of turmoil within the organization. So classic example is you've got colleagues that are at each other, or there might be conflict within the organization between different divisions, uh, different areas within your company. So your management team is nowhere to be found, or rather they don't actually know what the company is, a culture is, and they don't know how to respond to these kind of things. And, or third issue, they don't have the skill set to be able to manage these challenges within an organization, identifying what the culture is, identifying the different personality traits within different members of their team, the strengths of, of each individual person, and then also how to be able to manage them and have them work together cohesively. So that becomes a major problem, which is in, in my experience, the number one issue in most companies is not having management, having the necessary skills or the resources uh, to be able to uh, uh, tackle cultural issues within the company. The third characteristic, and that is where you've got colleagues taking credit for others' work. Straightforward. It creates resentment. It creates problems. Um, you've got one person taking credit for someone else, and he could be doing that in two forms. It could be one where he might be bullying the other person and taking the, the credit for the work that the other person is doing. And the second way is they're doing it without the other person even knowing, right? So they do the, the, the person A does all the work, person B takes the work and then goes and reports that in a meeting of some sort to management or to other stakeholders within the organization. And person A doesn't even know that person B has taken the work and passed it off as their own. Yeah. Once you know person A is gonna find out, it's gonna create that resentment, it's gonna create problems, it's gonna create a number of challenges. And then that obviously affects the, the culture that then happens because you know these things might be happening not only with person A and B, but it could be person C and D and other people as well. That, that might be just the culture within the organization, others taking credit for, for work that is not theirs. The fourth characteristic or behavior that is destroying uh, that, or that destroys a company's uh, culture, and that is when teams or divisions work in silos. You know, division A, or let's say the accounting finance division, they might be working on stuff, but they don't share anything with everyone else. Or the marketing division is, is working on a particular uh, campaign in the marketing, but then they don't go and share that with, you know, the fulfillment, the delivery teams. And that creates issues. It creates, you know, uh, problems between them. And this is where there's these challenges and it, it affects the company culture as well. The fifth one, which works 
hand in hand with, you know, when companies are working in silos is the communication breakdown. You've got various different divisions or individuals not speaking to the other division, sharing information with the other divisions. So in that example, the marketing division creates a campaign, but then they don't share that with the sales or the delivery or the fulfillment teams, fulfillment divisions. Right? That communication breakdown, all of a sudden, they've got an influx or a demand for you know, a particular product or service that the marketing team was promoting and advertising, but they don't know anything about that. They don't know anything about the costing. They don't know anything about what is involved and you know, what services they need to deliver on. And that creates this breakdown in communication. And of course, then you know, culture, uh, team culture, uh, organization culture is affected in that way. The sixth characteristic or challenge that creates uh, obstacles and the breakdown in company culture is when a leader, a manager, or the owners of the company start demanding too much of their employees and vice versa, they also start to micromanage them. This this creates, you know, this, the, the, the culture of the organization where you've got managers demanding too much or, or micromanaging their team members, th- that creates conflict, it creates issues, and, you know, the team culture is affected and the organization's culture is affected as well. Characteristic number seven is no, not recognizing the good work and effort that your employees and those that you manage and lead are producing. Everyone out there, leaders, managers, and even, you know, the the people that you manage and staff, so your staff members, are walking around every day with a sign on their forehead saying, please recognize my work, please say something good about me, give me a compliment. Everyone is walking around that. It's just human nature. Now, if you don't recognize the people in your organization for the work and the effort that they put in, then they're not going to be motivated to want to do better and produce great results. And that affects the overall culture of the company and it also affects the overall performance of the organization and the company as well. Characteristic number eight, inflexibility and also reluctance to change. There's consultants out there that work predominantly in the space called change management. And that's to help organizations change and also move uh, away from the old way of doing things and into a new and, and, and possibly improved way of doing things. But many managers, leaders, um, company owners might be inflexible and they have this reluctance to change. You know, what was work? A lot of them say, if it ain't broken, don't change it. You can't use that to, to, to compete in, in, in today's economy, you need to be flexible. You need to be able to change and make a, a move towards new systems, new ways of operating and doing things differently because what you did before may not be able to get you where you want to in the future. So you've got to have that flexibility and also be open to change. So the ninth characteristic is lack of transparency and also not being open and allowing your employees to provide their input. So two major things that definitely affects workplace and company culture is if things are not transparent, different divisions or managers hide things away from companies and their employees. They're not transparent and open about what's going on within the organization, not transparent if there's major issues, uh, uh, finance issues, uh, and so on. So these things create this challenge and then issue, and they create you know problems when it comes to the company culture because the the team members might talk and they might say, you know what, leaders do things behind our backs, and we don't know what, what's going on, or they don't don't tell us about how well the company is performing, or maybe they don't tell us that the company is performing bad, and in a few months' time we might be out of our job. You know, so that's a call, that's that lack of transparency. And the second part of that is, you know, where leaders and managers are not open to the input from the employees. You know, employees a lot of times come with, you know, experience. They might bring that from different organizations that they work with. And, you know, if you don't, are you not open to that, then employees are not going to want to share these things with you. And they're going to say, look, le- the leaders and the managers don't care about what I have to say any longer. 
it's a poor reflection on on the the managers and also then it creates this culture within the organization is one of those that the leaders and managers aren't interested in in what I have to say I'm just a number to them I'm just one of the staff members uh, characteristic number 10 is uh, poor life balance and that's basically something that you know we all strive for and even leaders prom- try and promote that and say oh, our organization gives you a great work-life balance but what does that actually mean what is a balance a work-life balance to everyone it could be something different you get those people that enjoy working in the shop every day and that's their meaning their purpose to come in and give you know a hundred percent a hundred and ten percent in in some instances i don't even know what 110 percent is you know it's 100 percent. you give it all right and then there's those that you know come in and they want to work they're nine to five they've got their lunch break they got their morning tea break they got their afternoon tea break and that's it for them. That's that perfect work-life balance, being able to fit everything in within that nine to five and, and around, you know, the, the breaks in between. I worked in an organization. Uh, well, you know, I had a staff, a number of staff members in, in, in my previous company. And I had some staff members that showed up before nine o'clock, got to work, got started. And their day started basically before nine o'clock. They were there after five, and when they finished the, their, their project or, or the, the items that they were working on, that's when they clocked off and away they went. And that's what they enjoyed doing. On the flip side, same company, same organization, uh, staff member that sat directly across that other team member, showed up at work, yes, on time, did not turn on their computer until it hit 9 a.m. at 4.55 p.m. started to wind down, get everything uh, wrapped up. On five, five o'clock, they were out the door. Two different people, two different perspectives on what was their work-life balance. So, you know, it means different things to everyone else. But in an organization, you need to be able to identify who in your organization fits the first style and who fits the st- second style and be able to tweak and provide them with that flexibility within there as well. And that creates that culture within the organization. Uh, Characteristic number 11, office gossip. Now, this is a major problem and it obviously affects the company culture. If you've got bickering and you've got people talking behind each other's backs, carrying tales, you know, and, and, and sometimes it can become nasty. So that is a you know straightforward issue and problem and it affects a company's culture as well. And then finally, you've got unfriendly employee competition. And this is where you've got colleagues uh, and team members pitted against each other, competing in a company, competing maybe for a particular position, particular role, particular projects as well. Unfriendly competition. Now, competition is good, but when it comes to uh, the point where they're sabotaging another person's work or they're stealing um, you know, you know, the work that another person was doing and making it uh, difficult for others to do their jobs, then again, that affects the company culture. It's not going to be a, a place where people want to work and they're not going to want to uh, stay there very long as well. So as you can see, I've shared with you 12 different characteristics and you know some of them are behavioral traits that affects company culture. Company culture is important to establish within your organization at the earliest point. So it doesn't mean right at the beginning when you start your company, you've got to set it up. It's it's evolving because it changes because the, the dynamics change. The people that you bring on board have different personalities. So it, it, it's important for you to be able to constantly be working on the culture within your organization. What I'm doing with a lot of my clients is establishing Uh, culture committees um, as part of our ongoing work with them and getting input from the leaders, the managers, as well as the employees and making sure that there's a a nice balance between how many managers and how many employees sit on the culture committee to be able to ensure that everyone is represented equally as well. So different uh, uh, people from different uh, ethnic backgrounds, different cultural backgrounds, different experience backgrounds are represented within the company uh, culture committee so that you know we can identify and make sure that we don't make any of these mistakes that I shared with you here today.